Hi, happy Sunday. It is Sunday, May 24th, and welcome to another floss tube video. This is floss tube number five for me. I am Marissa M. Kissa and M. Kissa Creations on Instagram, and I wanted to thank you for joining me again. Um, thank you if you're returning. Thank you for all my new subscribers. Um, I really appreciate um, the new visitors that I've had to my channel, and I hope that you stick around. I hope you hit the subscribe button and the like button, and that you see some things that you really enjoy. Um, we are right in the middle of Labor Day, Labor Day, Memorial Day weekend here in um, the States, and um, just enjoying some time with my family, some time to stitch, um, and being grateful for those that have um, served our country and um, lost their lives. I want to first start with my Stitch Sania and Mania progress. Um, so my plan for Stitch Mania has been sort of a Stitch Sania. It is a little bit of like a crazy for me because I kind of tend to jump around. I don't usually stitch on one project for more than I would say one to two weeks, which we're just now hitting the end of that. So. As you'll see, I did kind of veer a little bit um, within my parameters that I made for myself. So what I am doing for Stitch Mania Sania has been that I am working on my daughter's birth sampler, um, Bienvenue by Long Dog Samplers, and I'll show you that in just a second, on weekdays. And then on the weekends, I'm working on Heart Streak Samplers, um, Consider the Lilies. And it's been going really well. I really am trying to get about two hours a day. I've had a couple of days where I've just had to take it off of stitching. It's just been, stitching is usually my stress release, but um, I just needed like time to like, because of life right now. Um, but we're doing good. Um, we're all still happy and healthy and um, still working. And so chugging along, but um, there's a lot of, I work in the food and beverage industry and there's a lot of changes happening. And so it's kind of one of those things that is just crazy to wrap your head around. So, um, yeah. So my plan's been working well. It also, my loophole in my plan is that if I work already for two hours on something during one of the, whatever the assigned project is during the day, that I can work on another project. So I did get to do that one of the days, um, but let me show you where I'm at with, with the good ones. So my main focus for Stitch Senia is Long Dog Samplers, Bienvenue. Okay, and so I mentioned last week that because I'm doing it not as a monochrome piece, monochromatic piece. Um, I, I kind of mentioned where I got my colors from and that they were from the birth sampler that I did for my other daughter. And I was talking to you like you knew what that was. So um, it's Bent Creek Baby Row. And I brought it out to show you guys. So there we go. In it. I have it in a barn wood frame. Um, it's from Michaels. I know other people have said it in their videos before and they've said it on comments. If you are going to get your project framed at a big box store that you don't know if they normally work with cross stitch, make sure you ask them about how they deal with cross stitch. Because I lace my pieces when I frame them myself now and this is not lace and it's just put in there and it's really one of my first projects that I finished so I had no idea and it was something that I wanted to pay for but in all actuality I might end up pulling it out of this you know like fancy sealed frame and redoing it myself just so the piece inside of it looks nicer because it's like starting to kind of sag and bunch and I don't know it's just I don't think it's gonna stand the test of time the way that it is but I do um, I love the matting and it looks really cute and in case you can't read it it says the patter of little feet a voice soft and sweet sweet child of mine and then it has Evelyn's um, information on there 
So some of the colors, let's see. So the gray that's in here I took, the two colors that are in the border are in the one that I'm doing for Zoe and the color of the hearts um, are in the one for Zoe. I left this green out and I don't remember what it is anymore and this yellow um, or gold I'm not using either. The new one. And so then I added another red. So clay pot or pink. So clay pot is the one that's in there and then I added root beer float. So I will put a picture in right here of where I was at the very beginning of Mania so you can kind of see how far I've gotten on this. Um, I've put in a good chunk of time, about 14 hours each week. So even when I've missed like a day of stitching, I've kind of tried to make up for it. So here's where I'm at. Uh, I'm losing steam on thinking that I might be able to finish it um, before the end of the month, but it's, it is still a possibility. So last week, whoops, last week I worked primarily on this side and finished, or the week before last and finished this. So my first week, actually my first week was, um, this motif right here. And then week number two was this motif right here. And then week number three, I worked on this motif here and did some of the box and some more border. So I didn't get as much done. I am going to have to break down and order some floss. I thought I was going to be able to make it um, with what I have, but it's not going to. It's going to be too stressful and there's going to be... I, I don't, I mean, if the dye lot issue is a dye lot issue, then it's a dye lot issue and it'll be what it will be. And then my other um, Stitch Senior Mania project is Consider the Lilies by Heartstring Samplery. And then I will also insert a picture of that here for where I started it at the beginning of May. And I have gotten a lot done. Um, I haven't pulled this out this weekend because I, I have a finish on a smaller project that I was working on that I kind of got caught up in. Um, but you know, I really hope you can't hear my neighbor who constantly mows his lawn. I don't understand how you can mow a lawn as much as he mows his lawn. He doesn't have a giant lawn and he has a riding mower. I think he just like likes it. He's Hank Hill. Um, okay, so here's where this is at. Ugh, I can't see. So I think, let's see, you're getting all of it in there and you can probably see me through the back. But, so this week, this last weekend, like I said, I haven't put it in the Q-snap yet for this weekend. So, last weekend I worked in this area I got, let's see, three of the border flowers done, maybe four, um, and these motifs here I did, I don't remember if I had these done when I showed it to you either, so, but yeah, it's coming along, it's starting to fill in, um, I think definitely when I put it back in, I'm gonna go here so that I can like kind of just have that whole area done because then I think it will look even more completed than it's already looking um, but I am just I continue continue to be completely in love with this piece um, and I love my time that I get to stitch on it I also organized my floss chaos for this project so what I did was I ordered, sorry, crinkle, crinkle, these guys from Amazon. I've been trying not to buy as much stuff from Amazon, but y'all, 
and I don't say y'all, but y'all, it's kind of hard. So it comes, I got a pack of 30, I think, for $10. I'll link them below. And it's these little, um, they're like turn into rings. And the smallest one, when you roll it, uh, or when you use it, look, it's this big. So not, it's not giant and it is kind of tricky to get going on it the first time, but then once you have it kind of rolled up. So these are all my, these are all the flosses for lilies that are like a double where you need more than one skein. I really felt like there was more than this, but maybe I'm just, or maybe I missed some and I still put them on the other one. But so those are all like that. And so those are all nicely organized and they live in the little front pouch of my bag. And then all of the rest of them are on, this is the middle size, I think. Is it the middle size? Yeah. This is the middle size of the um, loops that come with it. And I put these flosses in order by like the dyer and then alphabetical by dyer so that I can find them easily because I still don't know, you know, you learn start to learn the symbols by heart and what color they are, but I still don't know all of them yet. And so I figured that'd be the easiest way to still be able to find them. Um, but I'm really digging uh, really digging these guys because they just like twist off. I know everyone's been, everyone's had these for a while now. I'm just like super late to the party. So if you don't have them yet, um, you can find them on Amazon. I really don't know where else you could get them that's not on Amazon. So that is why mine came from there. Um, so I'm going to be sticking with those Stitch Mania plans through the end of the month. Sorry, I have like you know how you, I don't know if you wear glasses and like one hair goes like in. Anyways, that's what's happening right now. That's why I'm like touching my face way more than I should. That is something that like I can like not get rid of with the whole everything that's going on is the touching the face and I I know that's like the most major thing. But okay, so one of the days I got stitching time during the day. Actually, so on Friday. On Friday, I got stitching time during the day. So I put my, like, I put like two and a half or maybe even almost three hours in on Bienvenue. And then I was like, I don't want to stitch on that during our Zoom call, our Vacation Land Stitcher Zoom call. And so I picked up my um, Bendy Stitchy. Um, Designs, Hildy's Strawberry Patch. I keep calling it Hildy's Strawberry. I feel like it's more like Hildy's Ladybug. She's so cute. And then this morning I finished her, which is why Lily's has not gotten back in the Q-Snap yet. Oh, there she is. So she is on, let's see, Michelle did her, had her model done on a like more sea foamy green. This is um, Antique Tiffany by Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And um, it's in almost all of the call for colors except for the Ladybug, which is Weeks Dye Works Turkish Red and Hildy's Hair, which is Purple Majesty, for also from Weeks Dye Works. Um, I used to not really like Weeks Dye Works that much and now I'm really digging Weeks Dye Works a lot. But I love her so much. So I'm gonna learn how to make a strawberry because she's supposed to be finished in a strawberry. I am also gonna pass the stash on this. So if you would like to stitch Hildy's strawberry, please say I wanna stitch Hildy's strawberry. Um, I'm gonna search for strawberry. Please be a subscriber um, and I would really appreciate it and share the good news because this is an adorable pattern. Um, I also stitched 
the Halloween one, but I think I might have that gotten that one digitally from Michelle. This one um, I got after right after it released from Market because I was like, I need this. I need this now. Um, even though I guess I'm just finishing it now, but um, she's all done. She's ready to go. And I'm ready to give that pattern to someone else who wants to stitch it um, so they can learn how awesome Michelle's patterns are. Let's see. Sorry. Notes, notes, notes. Okay. So I've been doing like kind of a weird little quirky thing that I've learned since moving to Maine um, a year and a half ago now. Um, my family and I, we relocated from Southern California to Maine. Um, I have lived the large, large, large majority of my life in Southern California within like a 15 mile radius. I lived in a couple different cities in Orange County, but we're like really pretty much just in that little bubble. Um, so there's been a lot of really fun and a couple really quirky things since moving to Maine. And this isn't really a weird one, but I'm just like super into now like regional treats. So definitely share what your regional treats are, but the big regional treat here is whoopie pies. And there's a couple different restaurants that make their own and they have a bunch of different flavors. Um, pumpkin ones are really good, like the pumpkin stuffing and sometimes the cook, like they're these like soft mushy cookies on the outside. And then the inside is like a creamy filling. And Helen D East Coast Crafter was told us once that she was making whoopie pies for frugal Yankee retreat. And I was like, Oh, that's awesome. I haven't had one yet. I can't wait to taste one. I said, what's in the filling? And she kind of looked at me and she was like, Hmm, lard. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, okay. Lard. It's delicious, delicious lard. You guys, <laughs> it's so good. Anyways. So if you get a chance to try whoopie pie or you want to know like what the regional whoopie pie regional dessert for Maine is it really is the whoopie pie and they are delicious it's a little cookie sandwich fluffy cookie sandwich cross between cake and cookie not really sure how to describe that part um, I'll try to find a company that like sells them that's like a local like made and made company and link it in the description box if you're like really itching to to try some whoopie pies to try some regional snacks but um, that has been my like new, I don't know, a culinary adventure since being here. <laughs> um, and then in addition to, so I think I'm just going to keep kind of coming up with little things that are fun and quirky about me. I don't know. I'll probably run out. I might not. I might just learn a bunch of new things about this state because I've got a couple of them written down already and it's kind of, it's just bonkers. But I did want to do um, the Rolodex random tag. So actually, you know what? First, let me show you my haul and then I'll Rolodex random tag you. So my haul is really tiny, which is why I want to do that first and then I'll, um, I'll go on. So part of my haul was these guys for all my stuff and then and then I ordered from Misty Purcell her so so tweet and it's so funny so I already have a pattern that has a little bird on it and a tomato pin cushion and I'm already working on it um but I I can't get enough like seriously anything that has a tomato pin cushion in it I have a really hard time not purchasing immediately. Uh, have a tomato pin cushion on my on my arm. Um, I I'm, I'm obsessed. I love them so much. So I bought this pattern because it's adorable and I love the colors. So I also bought from her her floss pack of the week Styworks colors, and I think that I'm gonna stitch it on. So I added the two DMCs too, cause I'll probably start this pretty soon. It's calling. Um, on This is a 40 count espresso. And I don't know who makes this 40 count espresso. Um, I got this off of a freebie table at Frugal Yankee 
last year. So, but I think it is just about the right color fabric and it's gonna look really cute. So, haul, 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 haul. Not too, nothing too crazy. I've been pretty good about not um, buying more than just like what I need and what I'm already working on. Okay, Rolodex random tag. How did you come up with your floss tube name? Okay, so my floss tube name, I think is technically M. Kissa. It might have a number on the end of it. Um, but M. Kissa was my like screen name when AOL first happened when I was, I think like 13 years old. My um, dad, his nickname for me when I was little was Marissa Kissa. And when AOL first happened, it was like, choose your handle. And I was like, it's gonna be M. Kissa. It was M. Kissa 2. Because even though it was the very beginning of the universe of having an internet handle, um, it was already taken by somebody. So I had to be M. Kissa 2 for a long time. And then that like changed sometimes into M. Kissa 13 and sometimes M. Kissa 14, because those are my two um, other favorite numbers. But now stuff is mostly M. Kissa. And then once I started, um, selling stuff online. It was M. Kissa Creations because I never, I, I've done a bunch of different things from custom ribbon rose bouquets for weddings to really cute, um, pillows that I've made. And now I design cross stitch. So, um, M. Kissa Creations has gone through a lot of different versions, but my floss tube is M. Kissa. My Instagram is M. Kissa Creations. And that is how that happened. Um, what word would you never use to describe yourself and why? Um, normal. I'm not normal. Um, I'm normal in some circles and some walks, but I have a lot of idiosyncrasy, idiosyncrasies. I like a lot of weird things, although like nerdiness has become very mainstream. Uh, I was definitely there before before that happened. Um, and then I'm, yeah, I'm just like a really random person. And so I just don't fit into the normal, the normal realm most of the time. Um, what type of music makes your teeth grind and why? This is very specific and I, and I don't really know how to describe it because I listen to almost everything and I really mean it. Like we, um, my husband has turntables in our basement and I listen to EDM. I like country music, mostly like early 2000s country music, um, but definitely I can listen to country music and not like want to pull my hair out. I feel like some people have that issue. Um, I really like classic rock. I also am like a poppy punk princess from like high school, college, um, and then college, like there was a little bit of college rock mixed in there. I like Dave Matthews band. So really, really, really almost everything. But the thing that like gets me ugh, is like the weird jazz that we play in our lobby at the hotel that I work at. And it is like weird sometimes like interpretive jazz almost like there wasn't really a plan but then also there's weird jazzy versions of like the spider-man theme song you can't all of a sudden there'll be like a weird drum solo bongos i it makes me cringe i i can't it makes me grind my teeth it's insane anyways no 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 um, if you could join any TV sitcom, which would it be and why? I think the most comfortable sitcom for me to be in would be Big Bang Theory, although I feel like I would not feel very smart most of the time. And I'm not... I, I, I am smart, and I think <laughs> they'd probably take me down a notch. Um, because I am not smart enough to hang out with them, but I'm definitely nerdy enough to hang out with them. And I think that it would be um, 
pretty fun. And for the most part, they are all kind people with good hearts um, that love their friend group. And that just really touches home. I feel like a lot of sitcoms, um, Friends is another one where they all just really care about each other. But like you look at like Seinfeld just has like some kind of gnarly people in it. And I don't know, we're not really a sitcom watching household aside from like those shows. And so I, yeah, I wouldn't really want to be on anything else. Um, if you could choose one animal to help you win a fight, which would it be and why? So the one thing that comes to mind, I'm just like a kangaroo, kangaroo's box. That just happens in cartoons. Although they are like kind of, I think they're kind of like some serious kickers. I don't know. They move pretty quickly. I'm going to choose a kangaroo. He'll be on my side. Plus I'm like digging the pouch thing. You can like carry extra stuff. I don't know, like in cartoon mode in my head of what animal's gonna help me win a fight. Not like, I'm just gonna take this lion behind me and sick them on you. I think like a kangaroo would be a great ally, <laughs> person to have alongside you. Um, go-to feel-good movie. What is my go-to feel-good movie? It depends what mood I'm in. I'm, we're movie freaks in our house. Um, and so the movies, I'm, I, I, I can't pick one. I have to give you a list. So Bull Durham, The Wedding Date, The Princess Bride, Doc Hollywood. I think those, like that really covers the like feel good, these movies make me insanely happy genre. I can't watch The Wedding Date without like ugly girl crying, even though I've seen it a million times, but it's like one of those ones that just makes you like feel good at the end of it. Um, so, so yeah, I can't, I can't pick one. So you get four. Um, and I feel like The Princess Bride for our generation, it, it just is that movie for everybody. And I think we, we all just like look forward to when we get to introduce it to our kids and hopefully they enjoy it as much. I do think it holds up because it takes place in like a fantastical time. So there's no like, well, how come they didn't like just call them on their cell phone kind of thing. Um, so I think, yeah. I. That movie just makes everyone feel good. If you don't like The Princess Bride, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. And I'm curious as to what movie makes you feel good if you don't like that one. Um, what would you sing at karaoke? I haven't sang karaoke since college. I don't have a great singing voice. I do know the lyrics to a lot of songs. If I had like a totally open, like not normal karaoke songs, I think that I would probably pick um, Scotty Doesn't Know by Lustra because I just think it's really fun. And when people know that song, like when you know that song for the same reasons, you all, everybody that like gets it, gets it together and then you're all like instantly friends because I feel like Euro Trip's not really a super popular movie but all the people that have seen it like love it and that song is just, it's a fun one. I think that I can probably pull off singing a nasally poppy punk song and I would pick Scotty Doesn't Know by Lustra. Lustra? Is that who it is? I think that's who it is. If it's not, I'm so sorry and I will link it below or put a note somewhere, put a big flashing light that says, I was totally wrong, but I think that's who it is. It's definitely not Matt Damon, although that's who sings it in the movie. He sings it. Um, if you were a superhero, what superpower would you choose and why? I think I would 
choose to be able to become invisible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just could go places. It might be a little bit dangerous, especially if you don't have any other superpowers. Like you get hit by things and things could run into you. Might not be the best choice. I just feel like it would be the most advantageous for me while also not like hindering me. Like I really wouldn't want to be able to read people's thoughts because then like what if you have to like hold up your guard all the time to make sure you're not listening to people's thoughts? I don't, yeah, I don't know. Invisibility. I'm going to go with that. Um, what did you want to be as a child? An archaeologist. So much an archaeologist. Still kind of want to be an archaeologist. I was super into reading about mummies and I mean, I, and I still am. I mean, I, I, anytime there's a traveling Egyptian, um, exhibit, I want to go to there. Um, I loved, 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 um, Mesa Verde National Park. It's, uh, if you don't know what it, what Mesa Verde National Park is, it's in Colorado, Colorado, yes, Colorado, kind of near the Four Corners, I think. Is it in Colorado or is it in Utah? It's near the Four Corners. It's like, I think, pretty sure it's in Colorado. Mm, now I feel bad. Anyways, it's, you've seen pictures of it. It's the ones where like the, the dwellings are like up in the cliffs and it's just like an amazing feat of architecture and engineering and just really cool and I love the study of just how people lived and how they did different things and being able to find all that out and um, I have I, I still have my kids Egyptian you know books that tell you exactly how they preserved the mummies and what was in there and uh, that stuff is all just really interesting to me and then I mean after that fact there's Indiana Jones and how could you like not want to do what he does? Aside from the almost dying a lot part. I want to keep my heart in my chest. Temple of Doom is weird. Uh, craziest, stupidest thing you've ever done on a dare. So I haven't actually done a lot of things on a dare, but the worst thing that I remember ever, or maybe I have and I just was like, whatever. Um, we well we used to play foosball in college and the rule was if you got shut out that you had to streak but i just got really good at foosball so i never had to do that um but the weirdest thing that or the most horrible thing i ever did on a dare was in like fourth grade at a slumber party i got dared to eat a spoonful of yellow mustard and i threw up and it was terrible don't eat a spoonful of yellow mustard just all at once that's the kind of food that like needs other foods to go with it. Um, okay, if you had to describe yourself as one animal, what would it be and why? I don't have an animal now, I don't think. I've changed a lot. My roommate in college used to call me the Barracuda. She gave everybody their animal. She said I used to hunt. And I had, she would like do the dun 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 Barracuda song every time I would like leave the dorm room. Um, fun things about me from college. Um, I don't know what my, I don't, I don't know if I have an animal now. I, I mean, I still, yeah. I'm not a barracuda anymore. Favorite flavor of jelly bean. This one's weird and I think people will think it's weird and I don't know, but I love it. I love Jelly Belly buttered popcorn jelly beans. They are so good. I can, like I will. Anytime I've been to a, a Jelly Belly store where they're like, you can pick whatever Jelly Belly you want. I just get a bag of buttered popcorn ones. That's it. Does the trick. I don't really like jelly beans otherwise. I'll eat 
jelly but like if someone's like here's a giant jelly belly thing i will eat the jelly bellies and i will enjoy them but like i don't really go i'm a chocolate person i don't really go for jelly beans but if i have that like jelly belly option buttered popcorn but i'll eat all the other ones too i think i really like the watermelon ones i also really like the watermelon ones because they're like green on the outside and pink red on the inside like a watermelon do you sleep with a top sheet why or why not yes i sleep with the top sheet i have to sleep with the top sheet i cannot get comfortable and sleep at night without something on top of my shoulders even like i also like wear clothes to bed but like even like clothes don't count like I need that sheet to like pull up and so even when it's hot I'll have just the sheet but when it's not I like need all the things and like if I'm gonna take a nap on the couch actually will now like if it's if it's warm out I will just and I don't need like a full quilt I'll grab one of those really um, like gauzy baby blankets that we have left over from the girls being babies like I refuse to get rid of them they're still in the house because like that's what I put just over my shoulders when I take naps because I need to have like that light thing just it's like a comfort thing my grandma once told me that my grandpa used to be like that too and that he always had to have stuff up on his shoulders I don't know I'll just I, I'll just take more comfort in it knowing that that's something that I got from my grandpa um okay so that's it for the rolodex tag that was a really really like fun and different tag so thank you carla um i really enjoyed the rolodex tag i hope you enjoyed my answers i if you have any questions for me if i didn't go over anything or i forgot anything or like talked about something like you should know what i'm talking about and you have no idea what I'm talking about, or you have a little bit of idea, but you want some more explanation on my end. If you wanna know what any colors for anything are that I've been using that I didn't talk about. Um, all of the, other than the, um, the strawberry patch, I don't know the names of any of my linens. They're like mystery things that have gotten come in boxes. I actually have been lucky and haven't had to spend a lot of money on linens. Um, okay, and so then remember, I'm doing the, oops, pass the stash for Hildy Strawberry. So if you want to stitch Hildy Strawberry, please um, say that you want to stitch the strawberry. Please don't say giveaway. I'll delete your comment. Um, please be over 18 because this, I don't want to get in trouble for sending something to someone's house. And... That's it for today. I hope you guys have a great weekend, a great week. Happy stitching. I hope you get a lot done. And thanks, everybody. Bye.